Hi guys, my name's Johnny. I run Banquist. Now, personally, I've been counting down the days until lockdown finishes to be able to invite friends around and cook for them because that's what food is all about. And so it's with an absolute pleasure that I introduce sharing menus from Banquist. Now, what better sharing menu than a barbecue and what better chef to lead that than Gareth Ward cooking out of Inesia in Wales. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Gareth Ward, uh, Inner Sea Restaurant and Rooms in McCuntliffe in Wales. Here we're all about ingredients, the best ingredients that we can buy and having fun. It's a fun dine, not fine dine for me. You know, we get, the, what we do in the restaurant is very different to what you're going to have today. It's, we're small portions of incredible flavour and amazing ingredients. This is something that is more for you guys at home. So this is incredible lamb, which is just been on the barbecue. I love barbecue food, so this is, lends very well to that. And then with some awesome flatbreads, and then over here we've got an awesome little garnish tray of tahini and mint yogurt with some awesome lettuce, pick and red cabbage and some spiced couscous. So that's just for you to sit around the fire and enjoy yourself. And after that, if you've still got room, the best way to finish off is an incredible tiramisu, boozy and coffee. Hi guys, uh, so as usual with Banquist, uh, we're going to give you a list of uh, some of the best ingredients that we can find and some pre-made ingredients uh, made with a lot of love. So we're just going to go through what we have here. This is for your first menu. Uh, so we've got here um, a flatbread mix which we're going to provide you. So we've got a really good quality flour. This is a Canadian flour, um, really nice and strong. With some uh, yeast and uh, obviously you guys are going to provide the, the rest of the water. And then here is some awesome lamb. So this is a saddler lamb. So anybody that doesn't know where a saddle comes from, it's where you would sit on a horse or on your boyfriend's back or whatever you want to do. Um, <laughs> so this is a beautiful cut of lamb. Um, it's obviously the ribs are at the top end, but you've got this really nice fat, really nice and tender. We're going to provide this on the bone so it cooks really, really nice and stays moist. With that lamb you've got here, which is a pre-made bag of um, shawarma spice marinade. So this is a recipe that I came up with. This dish basically comes from when I own a pub one day. This will be one of the dishes in the pub. Uh, it's not on the menu at the restaurant, obviously, because we do taste the menu, but this is a very rough, this is, all, this is what food's all about for me. It's a family sharing dish. This is something you sit down on the table with your people you love and you just tuck in and you enjoy yourself. So this is, so this in here, it's got like beautiful black cardamom, it's got paprika, it's got garlic powder, onion powder, beautiful olive oil, um, cumin, coriander, ginger, I could go on. It's, many many ingredients in there but it's just really really tasty the longer you get that on the lamb obviously the better it's going to be and then another two pre-made ingredients is an awesome tahini and which is a uh, tahini dressing it's got a little bit of garlic in there some lemon juice uh, awesome um, yogurt which has been flavored with mint because you can't have a lamb without mint and then this is uh, a spice couscous mix so you've got some couscous and then a beautiful little spice mix that goes in there some dried fruit some um, flaked almonds, uh, some chicken stock, a bit of lemon with some lemon juice and some mixed herbs. And that's all really, really beautiful. Goes really well with the lamb. Uh, some greens and um, we've got a uh, pickled red cabbage, which we're going to supply you with the pickle and liquor. And all you've got to do the night before is get this shredded up, salted and uh, overnight. So it, it breaks it down, flavours, seasons the cabbage and then we'll pickle that in the morning. And then for your last thing, uh, make this the night before. It's better sat in the fridge overnight and it'll make all this dead easy. Is a tiramisu. So we're going to supply you everything to make the tiramisu, put it together yourself. But sometimes making a tiramisu can be very tricky for a simple dessert. So we're going to take out that trickiness by just giving you a mascarpone with some awesome vanilla and some icing sugar. You're going to make a little mousse out of that. You've got some really, really awesome quality cocoa powder. You've got some Ladyfingers biscuits that go in the bottom. This is going to be pre made for you. This is an awesome coffee syrup with sugar and rum because we, you've got to have rum it's the best and uh, yeah that's it so that's that's going to be your list of ingredients uh, enjoy cooking it okay cool so obviously to make this work at home 
you're going to have to have some bare essentials. Um, so we'll start off over here with obviously the usual stuff is some salt, some nice sea salt molding, some sugar just for seasoning and some nice olive oil. And this is just some cooking oil as well, just in case uh, you want to use both. Uh, and then you've got a tray for cooking, which is cooking the lamb. You've got a couple of mixing bowls for making the mousse, um, for making the couscous. And then you've got uh, a pan for your stock, uh, a zester for your lemon, for your couscous salad, a marise for your mousse and uh, a whisk for your mousse. And uh, you've got some scales, obviously, you need to weigh stuff out. So uh, when it comes to barbecue, so you want, you, you want the best coal you can find, obviously for flavour, it's all about the, the best quality. If you buy rubbish coal, it'll, it won't taste very good on your food. Uh, so please buy the best if you're using a, a charcoal barbecue. And to light it, either a blow torch or matches, or you know, I don't recommend using fire lighters, but if I, if you need to, do. But if you are using fire lighters, make sure they're completely burnt out and before you start cooking anything, because you can get that horrible flavour on your food. So just get rid of that. But obviously, I mean, it should be gone before you start cooking anywhere, because your barbecue ember should almost be it should almost be burnt out before you start using the barbecue. And last but not least, the most important thing: some clean film free couscous. And that's it, that's all, that's all you need. So, the night before, you've received your box, you're going to get all your ingredients out, and then there's a couple of jobs I'm going to get you to do beforehand. So it's just to make your life a bit easier in the morning, uh, because in, in my opinion, you know, you're buying these boxes, you want, you, know, you want to cook something, but you also, you don't want to feel like you're at work. So, this is a job that I'll make, obviously this lamb tastes better, and this job easier for you. So, get yourself a tin or a pot, or whatever you can fit in your fridge. And you've got your lamb, which will be in a bag. You just unwrap the lamb. You don't like, normally we would trim, if you get it like this, we would, we would trim these down quite a lot, but some of these bits are going to be unbelievably tasty on the barbecue. So if you're doing a barbecue, if you were cooking this on a menu at home with a really fancy dish, you'd trim it down, French trim it and make it look fancy. But because of all this, this is all going to be really tasty off the barbecue. So we'll leave that on. So you're going to put this in a tin, like this, and then you'll open your bag of marinade. And this marinade, like I said before, it's really tasty. This has been, uh, we make this quite far ahead. So it, all the flavors, all the spices, almost rehydrate and you get this incredible taste. If you make it to order and then put it on your lamb, you, the, by the time the lamb is marinated, the spices will only just be starting to get them to the best. So it's good to make these well ahead, which is obviously what the bank this guys are gonna do for you. So we're just gonna pour all of the bag, use the whole lot, onto the lamb like that and you want to give that a really nice stir if you want to put some rubber gloves on you can do just if you don't want to smell like shawarma all night but it might be a bit of a tease for the next day so you know just leave it like that so like that so you just rub it all in like so and that's how it's going to look and then if you can do every couple of hours if you want to before you go to bed. You can just keep on giving this a little rub and move around. Just so you keep them spices on the lamb rather than in the bottom, because obviously they will naturally all just sink to the bottom. So yeah, just keep on, on moving it in the tin. If you have the luxury of a vacuum sealer at home, which some of you do have, I know that, you could put this in a bag and vacuum seal it with a marinade. It speeds up the process a little bit and stops you having to move it around. But obviously not everyone's got one of them, so. Uh, just do it in the tin and that's it that's just that's your spice lamb pop that in the fridge overnight like i say 24 hours is the best if you've got that much time but yeah that, that's your marinated lamb so next job uh, you've done your lamb next one is to put your uh, flatbread together so in the bag already in the box we're going to provide you with 500 grams of bread flour and seven grams of dried yeast. They're already gonna be in there. Then you've got to weigh into there, 15 grams of salt, which you're gonna have yourself. Like so. If you're using molten salt, just break it up with your fingers as you're putting it in, so you don't get huge chunks of salt in there. And 15 grams of sugar. Uh, we use granulated sugar in the restaurant. It's up to you if you use granulated or the castor. It really doesn't mind. And then, just some warm water. So just bring it up, tepid, no higher than blood temperature. Any higher than that, you'll kill your yeast. 
So that's going to go in there. So 290 grams of water, then get your hands in there and you're just going to give this a stir. You don't have to, with normal bread, you would have to either fold this or beat it in a machine. It's a flatbread mix, so it's not, it doesn't have to be that worked because you're not after a rise and an incredible crumb. You're after something nice and tender, uh, something not too, too much of a chew and just a really nice tasty bread. So you bring this together with your hands and then once you've got a dough, which is all of your ingredients in the bowl, once they're all into a nice doughy ball, we'll get this on the workbench and we'll work it. Now, if you've got a KitchenAid at home, which a lot of you might have, you will work this in the KitchenAid for about five, 10 minutes on speed two, two to three, not too high, but obviously I'm gonna make this by hand because I don't wanna show you how to make it in the KitchenAid and then you not have one. So a kneading technique, so you've got everything out your bowl is now in there. Your bowl is almost uh, clean. So just clean off your hands. Make sure that you've got, that's, that's how you know that you've got a nice dough and it's got the right amount of water in it. It's, it's not falling apart and it's not too wet, it's not sticking to your fingers. So we're just gonna give this a knead now. So just hold on to the bottom, use the palm of your hand, push it out and then fold it over. You just wanna keep doing that, keep turning it over until you've got a bread that's nice and smooth. You don't want huge chunks of uh, flour in there or anything like that. You just keep kneading it and you want to knead it just for a couple of minutes. Like I said to you before, it doesn't have to be worked like a normal bread because you're not, like you see, you're not after that rise, you're not after that crumb. So we're just going to knead that until you feel it, it, it becomes less sticky and it feels like it's getting strong and it stretches like a bit elasticy. What you're doing there is you're bringing out the gluten in the flour. So you've got a nice smooth bread dough there. And all you do with this now is you pop it back in your bowl and you would clean fill on this and then you leave it overnight. Either out on your workbench or you know, not somewhere not too warm, but it wants to be warm enough for the yeast to activate. And that'll double in size and then tomorrow we'll knock that back in the morning and we'll uh, we'll make some flatbreads on the barbecue. So the night before, we're gonna get this done. So this is the pickled red cabbage. Really beautiful texture and acidity, nice sweetness to go with uh, the barbecue lamb. Obviously, every time you get a kebab, you've always got red cabbage on there. So our little bit, this is our little version of it. So you've got a quarter of red cabbage there in the box. So what you do is just take the core out, like so, and then get rid of the outside layer, because obviously that's the toughest. And then if you break it down into say two or three layer bits like that, it's easier to chop. One of the biggest mistakes people do is try and chop the whole piece of red cabbage and end up taking the fingernails off. So if you break it up into little pieces like that. Now this doesn't have to be mega fine because it is literally just pickled cabbage. So there's a nice sharp knife. Just slice it like that into nice, nice slices. So that goes in the bowl. Into one of them quarter cabbage, we're gonna do 100 grams of salt. And 100 grams of sugar.
And what you do with that is you just give it a mix until it's all covered and there's no, no big piles of salt and sugar mix in there anymore. So all your cabbage is covered. And what this is going to do is going to season your cabbage, obviously. It's also going to take out all that water. Because like cabbages are full of water. That water hasn't really got much flavour. So you get rid of all of that. And then when we come to pickle it, all that water that's been taken out will be replaced with this beautiful pickle liquor, which will give you this incredible uh, crunchy, uh, salty, sugary cabbage. So we're just going to cover that with some clean salt. And just leave that somewhere overnight outside your fridge and then tomorrow morning we'll finish that off so last job to do before you go to bed and um, obviously this is going to be better made the night before because everything's going to soak in and going to real taste amazing the next day and chill down in your fridge and be incredible uh, is the um, tiramisu which is my favorite dessert in the world hence the reason why it's on the menu it's on our menu in the restaurant very different to this but this is a tiramisu that I will do one day in, in our pub or in our more casual restaurant that we're going to do in the future. So this is just a real, real simple recipe. So you've got some mascarpone. It's 500 grams there. This is really easy. There is more complicated ways to make this mousse, uh, but we've kept it more simple for you guys at home today because it can be quite tricky. So we're just going to take them off there. And just empty your mask pony out onto your scales. Like so. And then reset the scales there. Try and pass it off so you get the little lumps out. So it's not you're not chewing on lumps of sugar later on. That's that. And then you've got uh, some vanilla. So this is beautiful fresh vanilla. Take the ends off, like so. Don't chuck any of this away. What you can do with this is you can keep the pods and all the trimmings and put it in some sugar, either icing sugar or granulated sugar, in your little jar or in your pantry. And then when you see cooking something a bit later on and you haven't got any vanilla, you can go, oh, I've got that vanilla sugar in the pantry and you'll open it up and you won't believe how tasty it is. And it's a bit of a cheap way of using vanilla if you haven't got any. So never chuck your vanilla pods away. They're always really, really, really tasty. There's as much flavor in that as there is in the seed. Just you can't eat the pods. So you just get a knife, back of a knife, and you just cut down, like I said, you just cut down the middle of your pod there. You leave it connected just at the top. Scrape out them seeds. Them seeds are unbelievable, really sticky. Like that. Then you just want to get your whisk. Just gently bring it together. Again, like I said before, if you've got a kitchen aid with a whisk attachment, much easier. Just get it all in there, turn it on slow to begin with, because if you don't turn it on slow, you're gonna end up with icing sugar all over your kitchen, because that's gonna be the first ingredient to leave the bowl. If you haven't got a kitchen aid, a bit of uh, elbow grease. Just give it a really good whisk. And you don't want to whisk it for too long because you want this mousse to be heavy and luxury and, and quite creamy and, and fatty. If you whisk it too much, it, ends, it goes really light and it takes that like really luxuriousness away from the tiramisu. So that's the, uh, the mousse there, which is beautiful. So you just put that aside, ready to rock. Next thing, get yourself a dish. It can be deeper than this if you want it to be, um, like a a trifle bowl or whatever you whatever you've got in your cupboard that you want to serve the the tiramisu in. This is again like the main course. This is a sharing platter, so 
you want to uh, make a nice big one so you can just get tucked in there with a spoon and then you've got your ladies fingers these are just dried classic Genoese sponge which has been dried out cooked and dried and you just layer them in there like so so yeah just lay them all in there nice and snug like so then you're going to have a nice big bag of this coffee uh, rum sugar and water mix which is like a beautiful soak um, and we're going to just pour these on these biscuits and you're just going to it's just going to soak right in there and one thing i normally do is i keep a little bit back for the end so if you just need a little bit more going in if there's any dry spots you can always catch them out but you shouldn't do so we've got a little bit left in there and then what we'll do is we'll leave these in there for 10-15 minutes and then just really gently just give them a little turnover as like that and that what that'll do is catch any dry bits and you can always finish it off with any leftover juice which will make sure that you've got enough in there to make you have it. this wants to be really beautiful and wet in the bottom and really fresh because this the bottom the syrup in the bottom is what makes the tiramisu fresh for me if it's too dry it's it's quite sickly so that's in there like that so in your dessert box you'll also have a pint bag which we'll supply so if you just fold the end over like that and if you've got a little dish or anything just to hold the end of the pint bag in just means you've got two free hands which obviously it's easier than trying to, use, trying to put it with one get yourself a Maurice so yeah just fill your pint bag up with all that mix that's in there making sure that you, you get everything off your, uh, off your Maurice Clean your bag down so you haven't got loads left in the top and then just give it a twist twisting the tie if you don't tie it off what will happen is you'll squeeze your bag and it'll all fly out the top and you'll have uh, mashed pony mousse all over the floor so just cut the end of the bag off and once all your biscuits like you see they're all almost soaked you just flip them over again any dry ones And they're all ready to rock so you just want to go over the top and then go back over and fill any gaps in Like so, use all that mousse up, like that, so it's nicely covered. And then just to finish that off, because this will all overnight, the mousse will relax a little bit and it'll all set down into the dish and it'll be beautiful and clean when it mixes with that um, coffee in the bottom. Grab yourself a spoon, you want a little sieve little coffee sieve or uh, a little this is a, like a little um, sieve for a producer doesn't really matter what you're using over the top and I always go really generous with coffee with the chocolate it smells amazing And that's it dead dead simple bang that in your fridge don't put any clean film on it because obviously you'll ruin the top put it somewhere nice and safe in the fridge so no one's gonna destroy it and uh, obviously someone will probably stick their fingers in the fridge overnight and you'll have half of it missing in the morning but uh, <laughs> that's a risky tip yeah. so there you have it turn soon
So now we're pickling the cabbage. So this cabbage has been out on your work surface overnight, uh, just basically salting. And then all we do is just rip the clean film off. And as you can see, it's just full of water in there. So that's pulled all of that water out of the cabbage um, and just seasoned it lovely. So what you do is you just lift the cabbage out into a bowl of water. Or if you're in the sink, you can put it in the sink, uh, put the plug in and just let cold running water run on it until it's just nice and clean. And then we just swish it around in the water. This is just getting all that excess salt and sugar off it. Otherwise you end up, it, it's done its job. It doesn't need to be on there any longer. But you end up with it too salty otherwise. And then just squeeze it as dry as you can into another bowl. Just like that. And then you don't want to wash it too long, you just want to get that excess off. And then you've got your bag of pickle. Just open it up. Pour it over. And with a spoon or a fork or some tweezers if you've got them. Just give it a mix. This is one of the first things you want to do in the morning. So this has lovely time to pickle down. And then if you just push it, so it's as submerged under that pickle and liquor as you can. And you just leave that, and that's almost ready to rock. So the minimum amount of time you want to pickle that for, in my eyes, is four, four to six hours. You want it to have a nice pickle on it. If you had a VAPAP machine in your house, which some of you might have, if you put that in a VAPAP bag and vac it with the liquid, it'll be pickled instantly. So that's just sucking it in, because that's how we do it in the restaurant. But obviously, if you haven't got that, you've got to give time for that liquid to penetrate the cabbage. So, it's the day of the barbecue. So hopefully you're dead excited and you haven't eaten the tiramisu overnight in the fridge. <laughs> if, if, if you have, that's fair enough. Uh, so what we're going to do now is um, we're going to preheat the oven and we're going to light the barbecue, which is obviously two really important things when it comes to this. So we're going to go over here now. So we've got our, uh, obviously a rationale oven here. Uh, the oven at home should be fairly similar. So just whack it at 100 degrees. If it's a fan, if you can turn the fan up or down, leave it on full uh, and get that on nice and early so it's just ready to go. It's ready to rock when you need it. And then barbecue, like I said before, so in here we've got our barbecue ready to go. We've got, um, if you're using a coal barbecue, make sure the, the air vents are open in the bottom to get that real airflow coming through. You've got a good amount of coals in there. Build it up, get loads of coals in, because what you're going to do, which is really important, is a lot of people don't do, is they put a tiny amount of coals in there and they try and cook on it, it's not hot enough. You get loads of coals, get it lit, let it burn for a long time in a, in a mass. So if, you, if you can imagine trying to get it into a pile, not flat, into a nice big pile, build it up. You do have, a lot of people do have these things which are like barbecue starters, which is like a big tube with a handle on it, and they've got a trigger. You can put that, if you have got one of them, you'll know how to use it, in the middle of the barbecue, fill the coals in the top, and you light it, and it's like a furnace. So that the higher it is, you get that airflow through it, it gets really hot, and then you release it, and then you can flatten it out into your barbecue when you've got them nice white embers. That's what you want to cook on. You want to cook on white embers, not black charcoal, because black charcoal isn't hot enough. When it's white, it's almost like your embers are spent and it's ready to cook. In a lot of barbecues that you have, if you're trying to cook for a long time and you want to manage your fire, is you'll have one side of your barbecue piled up, which is red hot embers. And when you want to cook, you take some of them out and you move it over to the part of the barbecue where you want to cook. And then you would feed that pile over the side with more coal or more wood. So you keep it burning all of the time. So it's like feeding the fire. And then every time you need to use the fire, you move a little bit out over to the side. Now, if you wanted ferociousness, get some right char on. Obviously you would char over the really hot bit. But if you wanted a control cook, obviously you take off enough coals to just cook it nice and lightly, which is what a lot of people don't do with barbecues is they burn everything. And then they think they don't, a lot of people aren't or don't like barbecues because they think it's just burnt food. It's not if you control your fire properly. So what we're going to do is we've got a blowtorch here. We're just going to put our lid down so we don't get spat at. 
and we're going to put the flames onto the coal. If you buy a really good quality charcoal, you will not need fire lighters because it will, they will, they will, they'll be nice and dry. They'll be really good quality, and they'll light very easily themselves. Obviously, the worse it is, the the more light, the more hot you've got to concentrate on getting it lit. But if you just put this in here for a few minutes, just keep moving it. This coal will light very easily. And just move it around so you're not lighting it just in one place. And obviously with this, we got a lid on this and you want, we want to keep the lid down because then you're drawn, it's drawn air through from the bottom like a fire at home. If you ever lit a fire at home, you open all of the, the dampers at the bottom up so you're drawn air through your fire and out the top, up your chimney, and that's what makes it get really hot. And then once it's hot, then you close everything down and you keep your heat in. Okay, so we'll leave that lid down. And that'll, uh, we'll come back to that in about half an hour and we'll see where we are. So, barbecue's lit. It took a little bit longer than usual because uh, uh, the coal was a little bit dusty and it's obviously been sat around quite a while because we haven't been cooking anything. Uh, so it was a little bit damp. So obviously a good tip is to, if you're buying charcoal, make sure it's been stored correctly. Uh, you want to store it somewhere nice and dry. Uh, and never use the bottom of the bag because it's full of dust. Um, so I'm going to show you now how your char how your barbecue should look. So just over here, so you lift your lid, and it wants to all start to be burning white. That's all going there now. So all the black hole is almost gone. And in a few more minutes' time, that's going to be all nice and white, and your barbecue is going to be that's going to be at its hottest. So that's where you want to be with that. So your lamb, been in the marinade overnight. And what you want to do is, you want to take it out of its tub. As you're taking it out, scrape off as much of the marinade as you can. It's done its job. Obviously you want to leave the oil on there because the oil is going to help it cook. But you don't want too much of that marinade on there because that marinade burns quite easy. So if you just scrape it off your hands, don't wash it or anything like that because that'll just ruin it. And then we're going to take this over to the barbecue and we're going to start the process of getting this nice barbecue. Now, one of my philosophies is with barbecue food is a lot of people think that barbecue food is food that's cooked from scratch on the barbecue. And now you can do that, but you've got to be, there's a skill to this stuff and there's people out there that are professionals at cooking low and slow or incredible food over barbecue from scratch. It's quite a, quite a hard thing to do. So one thing that we do in the restaurant to make it consistent and amazing is you buy the best coals and it tastes incredible. We put this in the oven and get it cooked absolutely perfectly to where you want it. And then you give it some barbecue love. And that flip, if your coals are good, the fat's gonna drip off that meat onto the coals. It's gonna flame up. It's all gonna stick to your meat and your meat's gonna taste incredible, but it's also gonna be cooked perfectly as well. So you're gonna get a proper barbecue experience. You know, like I said, like it is a skill to cook food on a barbecue from scratch. So this is the way that we do it in the restaurant. So we're gonna take this over to the barbecue. And we're just gonna start charring it up. Dead gentle. And like I say, you, that barbecue now was full of coal. The coals have all burnt down now and there's only a little bit of the bottom, but your, your actual barbecue itself is really hot. But it's not too hot, you're not burning everything. You know, it shouldn't be ferociously on fire, kicking flames out and you can't get your face anywhere near it. And your hands are on fire because you can't do anything with it. That's an out of control barbecue, it's too hot. You know, that's, um, you, you, you're cooking wrong. So it should be, you should be able to use it. You should be, it should be like, easy to use you shouldn't be you shouldn't be on fire you know you should be making the right noises so all you're doing is you're just moving it around you see that already start the char up just, just there like that so it's not burning instantly you know if, you've, if your barbecue is too hot and it's not in control you'll set fire to this straight away it'll be black and it'll be ruined 
and that's where a lot where a lot of people go wrong. I could get away with cooking this piece of meat on this barbecue from raw all the way through perfectly because of the heat it's on at the moment. I can control it with the, the airflow at the bottom. If it gets too hot, you dampen it down. If it gets too cold, you open it up, let some air in. So I'm just trying to flip it over again there. And you're just looking for some even caramelization. And you see them fats are starting to melt now on the lamb, hitting the coals. And you're starting to get that little bit of flameage, which is what you want. But like I said before, not out of control. You, you should be in control of your fire. And you just flip it over and you get it caramelized on every side. Beautiful. And I see this is on the bone, so you've got that protection of the bone on there to keep this nice and moist. and all that beautiful fat under there in the inside. This is the suet fat. And this, if you're having the short saddle, this is the stuff that you've got your kidneys in here. This is the stuff that protects your kidneys from any damage. So this here now, if you leave that, we'll leave that on, will render and keep that lamb beautifully tasty and moist. And you've also got your little fillet here as well, which is on the other side of your bone, which is a, uh, great little treat if nobody else knows it's there don't tell them and nick that bit so that's just nice there so that's how it should be on each side so what we do with that now is we'll start it all we'll start it skin side down then we'll flip it halfway so we want this fat to render and we'll just pop that in the oven. Preheated oven, 100 degrees, like I said before. And that wants to go in there until it's about medium. I don't like lamb too pink. A lot of people cook it medium rare, it's horrible. In my opinion, it should be medium cooked. Uh, it wants to be about 65 to 70 degrees in the middle if you've got a probe. Uh, but it takes about an hour, but obviously a probe is better if you've got one. And then, then we'll uh, let that rest. So here's your, um, your door, which is proved overnight. As you can see, it's come right up the bowl, full of air. And all we're gonna do with this, is we're just gonna turn it out onto the bench. So just get it out there, you're knocking it back basically, knocking all that air out. So it'll wanna prove again, because that's what happens. The yeast just want to eat all the time. Onto your bench like that. Now this will give you four big flatbreads or eight smaller ones completely up to you how you want to roll it out so we just give it a bit of flour and then i'm going to cut this into four like so <clears throat> but like you say there's loads there you could go into smaller ones depends how big your barbecue is and how uh, how good you are at cooking things like this because if it was too big it could be a bit hard to handle but so if you cut them all smaller it'll be easier for you but we can go bigger ones on this so what we're going to do is just make them into like rolls
and just roll them out. If you've got it at home, it's better to roll out with something like a semolina or a rice flour or something. Obviously, if you haven't, just a normal flour will do. But if you use like a semolina or a rice flour, they don't go sticky and they don't absorb into your bread mix as much as a normal flour does. And it might be a little bit easier to use. You want to be quite, quite rough with this. You want to get it nice and flat. Obviously, because it's, it's, it's the, you brought the gluten out. It's fighting you. It wants to go back into a ball. But you want them flat. So you want to roll it. It wants to be about three or four mil thick. You don't want it too thin because it'll burn on the barbecue. You don't want it too thick because it'll take longer to cook. So you've got to get it just right. And that's it, that's your flatbreads rolled out and they're ready to rock. What we do with these for a little bit is leave them on the side. You can put them on some grease proof or just make sure there's plenty of flour so they don't stick to your bench. And just let them start to prove up a little bit. Maybe 30 minutes, just so you start seeing some bubbles in them. That's just trying to get that yeast activated again. Just means that they won't be really dense. They'll be, they've got that air in them again. So yeah, just leave them until they start to bubble and then we're gonna get them cooked. Cool, so time for your spice couscous. This is dead easy and absolutely delicious and goes really well with this lamb. So you get yourself a nice big bowl, and just for the salad. First thing you do is pour your pre, you've got a bag of stock, white chicken stock. Just bang it in your pan, and we'll just pop that on the stove. And you want to bring that to the boil. Now, you've got your couscous. Just cut that bag open. into your bowl and then you've got your pre-mixed fruit and nuts then you've got your pre-mixed spice mix make sure you get it all out and then what you want to do is just get a grater and some lemon And just grate off the zest. Don't go into the white because that's bitter. You just want the zest. Go around like that and it's of two lemons. So it's really nice and fresh. You want loads of lemon in this. Like so. And then, obviously I'm not going to show you how to juice the lemon. I've got a bag of pre-made juice over here, but just cut them in half, juice them as you normally would, squeeze them out of your hand into the bowl, like that. So that's two zest and two juice of lemon. And then we're gonna, what you try and do with this is you try and get it as close to season perfectly as possible now, so we haven't got to mess around with it too much at the end, because you want it nice and fluffy. So just a couple of pinches of salt, Obviously you will need some more of that just to finish it off later. A couple of pinches of sugar. Again, you'll need some more of that. And loads of olive oil. Now what the olive oil does, when you start mixing it dry, it coats all of the grains of couscous. And it's like when you cook pasta in a pan with oil in it, it kind of coats the pasta on the way in and stops it off from sticking together. It's exactly the same as this, so you put it on the couscous and then when you pour your hot stock on there, you don't end up with just a massive clump of couscous like a cake. It's all individual little grains and nice and light. And obviously the couscous, the uh, olive oil, if you use a nice extra version, it just gives it that incredible like bitterness and olive, olive flavor that you want. You get loads of it in there, like as much as you want, obviously. 100 mils, maybe more. Depends how much you want in there. And you give it a stir. And you're looking for like a sand, a wet sand texture, as if you were going to build a castle. Make sure it's all really well mixed. You mixed all that spices in.
Just go a tiny bit more olive oil in there. And that's what you're looking for. Nice wet sand mix. So, we get our stock. That's just coming up to the boil now. You need to roll a clean film. And what you're going to do is you're going to pour the stock over this. You're going to give it a real light mix quick and then you're going to cover it with clean film and you're going to leave it. You've got to leave it over, say, 10, 15 minutes. Obviously, don't paste the clean film before then. But it will sit there with the clean film on for half an hour, an hour, somewhere warm, you know, without being without uh, ruining the salad. So that'll all be fine. So we just clean that down. And then what we've got to go in here while we're waiting for that stock to boil is a mix of herbs. So we've got some beautiful mint. And you'd be quite, be quite um, generous with your herbs because this is going to just make it really fresh. And you've got some parsley. And your coriander. Now what we do in the restaurant is we tie our little bunches of herbs with string or elastic bands is good and it saves that out of controlness on your chopping board with people like trying to gather it all together and almost chopping the fingers off. If you tie that with a string your job's done for you. You just hold it together like that nice and tight at the end and it's going nowhere. You can get the stalk in there as well. Coriander stalk is by far the tastiest part of the herb. And that's your little fresh herb mix. Stock's boiled. So all we do is pour that over the top, like so. Just give it a real quick mix, make sure that there's no dry huskus at the top and it should all just be submerged in there. And then we're just going to clean film that up and leave that, like I said, 15, 20 minutes. But if you're not, don't touch it until you need it, until you're ready to go. So when everything's ready, you, your lamb's cooked, your breads are cooked, everything's in bowls, rip that clean film off and we'll chuck the herbs in and we'll finish it off. Cool, so we're just going to go over to the oven and check the lamb. We're about halfway through cooking time. And we're just going to give it a flip over so it's cooked. it cooks evenly, so you're cooking it on both sides. So there's that beautiful bit of lamb cooking beautiful. Slow, which is what you want. And you start to give it a little press. It's still very, very spongy, so it's, it's still got a good, a good bit of cooking to go there. And we'll just get that back in the oven. Awesome, so we're almost there. So you've, you've got your, your pickled red cabbage done. You've got your couscous salad soaking. All you've got to do with that is chuck some uh, herbs in there and season, finish the seasoning later. Your lamb's in the oven. You've got all your dressings ready to go. Um, we need to chop up some salad, for some little leaves. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cook these flatbreads. I've said to you before, you can about half an hour on these. But as long as they're nowhere really hot, they can sit on a bench for a couple of hours and, and they'll just really slowly cook the proof again. Obviously you don't want big domed breads, but the longer you leave these, the more tender they'll be. See, these are nice and soft now. The more tender they'll be when you eat them. If you try and cook them straight away, they'll be quite tough. So don't be too scared to leave them. So what we're gonna do with these is we're gonna get these on the barbecue. So we've got the barbecue over there. It's sat at a nice temperature. Uh, it doesn't want to be too, like, like everything else, it doesn't want to be too hot because uh, it'll just burn them instantly and you want to cook them. But obviously it doesn't want to be too cold either. So if it's dying down a little bit and you've, you think it needs a few more coals, get them in there and get it, get it fed and get it hot again. So you take your flatbread, 
on your paper you open up your barbecue if you've got a brush a wire brush or anything at home for your barbecue these sometimes come with your barbecues just give it a little brush on your on your top of your on your top of your bath just to get any pieces of meat or marinade or anything off there because if that sticks to your bread you can't get it off and it can be quite offensive so what we want to do with this is you just get it like that just turn it over pull your paper off like so and a little trick obviously you haven't got to do this if you have got a blowtorch you can light it and run it over the top of your bread while it's cooking so you're cooking both sides at the same time almost as if it was in like a clear hole a clear pot you can see it's starting to puff up and it'll puff up inside and it'll steam so that steam is cooking your bread from the inside see how that's rising there that's how you want it look at that there you go beautiful and that's just filling up with steam and that's cooking from the inside and you just give it a little flip over a couple of seconds on the other side and then just lift it out onto a rack and let them cool down if you think that if you've maybe over rolled it and it's slightly too thick you'll find the bits at the end that might be a bit too uh, underdone for you you can always just pop that in the oven 100 degrees with your piece of meat just to finish it off but it should be if you've rolled it out right you should have a really nice beautiful barbecue flatbread it's really nice and light so the next one I'll show you how to do it without a blowtorch if you haven't got one so again same thing your dry side down like so and you just leave it you don't want to be messing around with it too much if you've got a lid on your barbecue this is where you can get away with putting it down like that and that kind of works the same way as doing the blowtorch would have done it um, it keeps that heat in trying to cook both sides and hopefully if you put the lid down when you open it back up it should be starting to puff up like the other one did just starting to puff up there obviously look the underneath is perfect if it was too hot if your barbecue is too hot that will be black far too quickly and you're going to end up with a raw bread so it's important that you really burn them coals down get them white in the bottom you might think that your barbecue is done it's not it's red hot you know but it's just not that fierce heat of like a well stocked black charcoal barbecue so we'll just have another little look see how it's starting to puff up there like the other one was again just check it underneath we'll give that another few seconds then we'll just flip her over like so lid back down for a little bit and that's it beautiful cooked flatbread So flatbreads are done, they're just sitting there, as I say, you can get them done, keep them nice somewhere nice and warm, but if you're not happy with, maybe you haven't rolled the, the outsides enough, just bang them back through the oven just to finish them off, but they should be absolutely fine. <clears throat> Next is checking the lamp, should be about ready now. So you take this out, so as you look in there, You've got some where we pulled the probe out in the oven that's reached 65 degrees in the middle which should be perfect medium <clears throat> you've got the blood where it's coming out it's coming out running out nice and fast it's absolutely perfect that is so what we're going to do is flip it onto that bone so it's sat on the spine bone and we're going to leave that to rest for about 35 minutes so it cools down rests nice and slowly all that blood goes back into the meat and then we're going to finish off the barbecue and get this, get this dish finished off. 
So we're just going to rest this piece of lamb once it's come out the oven, 30, 35 minutes. And then when it's away, we're going to put this dish together. We're going to give the flatbreads a little flashback on the barbecue just to freshen them back up again. And then the lamb's going to go on, get that nice flavour, and then we're going to dress this dish. So, we're going to get these garnish finished off for this lamb dish. And then we're going to get the flatbreads warm back up on the barbecue. And then we're going to finish this lamb off and get this bad boy so we can eat it. So you've got some lettuce. Just take off the bottoms. <coughs> and you want to get rid of your outsides because that's a horrible old leaf. It's bitter and not very crispy. And you just want your centers. Just this in the bowl. You don't need any salad on any salad dressing on these because you've got enough flavour. You've got the tahini. You've got the pickled cabbage, you've got the couscous, you've got the mint yogurt. You don't need to put anything on these. If you want to, if you're desperate to do it, put some olive oil on there. You know, but you don't you don't need to. You've got loads of fat on the lamb. So this is just to give you some nice lettuce. That goes on the tray, like so. Oops. And then we'll finish this couscous. So just take your clean film off. Like so. Get yourself a Marie, something soft. It doesn't want to bash it to bits. Get your coriander in there and your mint and parsley. And just give it a little stir. And it should just break down dead easy. As I say, like the olive oil has stopped it all from clumping up. It will be in clumps, but as soon as you stir it, it'll just break up. And just make sure all them herbs are mixed in. How's that there? Look how beautiful that looks. And we're just going to check the seasoning on it. And see, it will need a bit, a bit more seasoning, but it shouldn't be too far off. Mm. So a little bit of fresh salt. Sweetness is absolutely fine. And that's it, and you get your bowl. And there's your little garnish tray. Ready to rock. So home straight here. Lamb's rested. Flatbreads are on top of the oven, it's nice and warm. So we're going to give the flatbreads a nice just little flash to swarm them back through again. Then we're going to get this lamb back from the barbie. We're going to get it off the bone, get it chopped up, and then we can enjoy this, this uh, meal. So just over to the barbecue. Just one at a time. Refresh your flatbreads just for a few seconds to keep them. Just what like warm and bread back through in the oven. Like so. Beautiful. And you're just nice, just, just warm. These are rested nicely. These are finished off cooking as well. That's the flatbreads ready to rock. Next is the lamb. So what you want to do is just that tray there with all the fat on it, just roll that lamb in there. Get all of that back on, on that lamb. and then get it on your barbie. And then this is just finishing, you want all that fat to drip onto them coals and get 
that awesome barbecue flavour onto that meat. If you have a lid, you can put the lid down. If not, if you don't have a lid, you can maybe just put a little tin over the top, just to kind of give that a little bit of smoke, so that smoke sticks to your meat. And you just want to, obviously, you be really careful. You've come, you've come this far. This is not where you want to mess it up and get it burnt. But you want it just nice and crispy. Again, it's all about your barbecue. It's not too hot. If it's too hot, you'll ruin your meat at the last minute. It's easy to burn at this stage because it's cooked and the fats are all really soft and runny, so they're going to run out onto the coals and the barbecue is going to get hotter at this stage because of them fats being soft. When it was raw, the fats are obviously still solid and it's not doing that, so it's, it's not making the barbecue as hot. But then animal fats on the coals will make the barbecue really hot, so you've got to be careful at this stage. Look at that, beautiful crispiness, beautiful and crispy, you can hear that, hear that, back onto the tray and we'll just let that cool down for a few minutes just so we can touch it otherwise we're going to burn our fingers off. So we're just going to take this bad boy off the bone and just get it sliced up on the tray. So we're going to keep that tray, don't get rid of that. We're going to brush the meat with them juices. So what you've got here is you've got the spine down here. So obviously this is two, a saddle is two pieces exactly the same that run across the side of the, um, the spine. So that's the spine there. So the other side would be on this side. So what we're going to do is it starts to come away from the bone there, which you can see where it's when we prepped it down. So just follow it. And just cut it and just go with it. You can feel the bone on your knife. So just make sure you can always feel the bone on your knife. If you can't feel the bone, you're chopping into your meat and you're going to leave a lot of meat on the bone, which is not a problem because you can just pick the bone off and eat it, which is fine, but obviously, your customers might be, uh, your guests might be a bit pissed off that you're eating all the meat off the board and they've got nothing. So if you see that there, that is absolutely perfect. That is a medium piece of lamb, which is what you want. Doesn't want to be soft and flabby and horrible. In my opinion, pink lamb, as in rare lamb, tastes fishy and it's not nice. That is beautiful and medium and moist. If you look at it there, it's incredible. So what we're going to do is here, is just slice her up so if you keep it skin side down because obviously it's easier to slice look at that unbelievable just going to finish off slicing this up here so if you slice it upside down which is i've done it there you might think why has he done that because that bit there's been on the bone and it hasn't seen any seasoning or anything so I can season it now perfectly and then flip it over just like that and then I've got my little tray try and pick it up in one go like so onto your tray A little bit more salt and these cooking juices which are just tasty as anything it's covered in it, I've got all that barbecue flavour on either pour it over or brush it on but just don't waste it you can also brush it on your bread if you want absolutely amazing on your bread obviously it's just flavour and no one wants to waste that 
Right, okay, cool. So here we are, all done. So we've got some beautiful lamb here, barbecued, um, really nice, beautiful medium. And then we've got some awesome flatbreads. And then uh, the garnish of pickled red cabbage, mint yogurt, tahini, some fresh lettuce, and spiced couscous salad. So if you're not too full after that, um, pop into your fridge and get this bad boy out. It's been sitting there all night, just soaking up all that flavor, just chilling out. It, you best eat this cold. Don't take this out the, freeze, out the fridge beforehand. Take it out when you're ready to eat it, because it's the colder it is for me, the better. Yeah, yeah, and it's just been sat there and it's, it's amazing. It's ready to rock. Just get some bowls or just dig straight in with spoons. Then you haven't got to do any more washing up ready to go. Favourite restaurant? Um, well, the best, it's hard to answer that one because obviously I haven't eaten in every restaurant in the world, but my favourite experience so far is Franzen restaurant in Stockholm. Absolutely blew me away. Uh, experience just it reset my whole world in cooking. Well, not cooking, hospitality should I say. Because cooking, the food was 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 amazing, you know, and but the food didn't blow me away. It was the experience, it was the hospitality, it was the way they had you in their hand from the moment you pressed the doorbell on the front door, and it was just that whole thing. It just absolutely blew me away. And uh, yeah, that's it. if you haven't been, you've got to go. Death Row meal. That's a hard one. That is, but I've got to say, a lamb Sunday dinner with mint sauce. Three dinner guests, um, my mum, because she never got to see uh, where, we, where, what we've done here, and I would love her to get, to, I would love her to see this, uh, but unfortunately she's not here. Motley Crew, because imagine having dinner with Motley Crew, absolute carnage. I mean, I think my mum would get on really well with them. <laughs> and then Jesus, just to calm it all down. <laughs> Favorite flavour crisp, hands down, is onion rings. You get the, the pound ones, the cheapest, nastiest onion rings you can buy. Unbelievable. I love them. If I wasn't a chef, I'd be in prison. <laughs> Simple as that. Have you ever had a brush with a lot? A few times. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we won't go into that one. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get over that.